Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Gold mining company Anglo Gold Ashanti is targeting a ton of new technology gold next year while prioritizing self-help steps to cut its debt, as well as considering asset sales and partnerships. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer tells us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Shannon. Anglo Gold Ashanti's new technology continues to look favorable while dispensing with conventional drill and blast operations. Can you tell us an update of the technology so far? You know, failure is not an option with this technology because if you see the way we mine, we've got to change. I mean, we leave 40% in the ground just to hold the roof up of the tunnels that we've built. And then of that 60%, we lose another 30% because of the way we blast. Mm -hmm. and, and then it, it gets transported seven times. So there's a loss there as well. So, I mean, as a national patrimony, we're just throwing it away. We cannot continue to mine like this, particularly as we go deeper. So this new technology, they can't fail with it. Of course, the advantage is that it can mine these pillars that we've left behind. And that <coughs> is very important as a starting point because the equipment that you need is quite big. So you need existing you know, roots mm -hmm. underground. If you have to start actually paying for that development, it's going to be another story. But if you can use existing routes, get to the pillars, <coughs> you can then mine those pillars, which some of them are very rich. And this can prove the technology. You know, this can be the proving ground. And at the same time, you can make a lot of money because the grade is so high and you're not getting the dilution that actually is just a cost. And so <coughs> it, it's uh, moving forward. Obviously, um, if it didn't have this pillar opportunity, I think it might go much slower. Mm. Uh, and um, there, are, there is a lot of pillar opportunity around, not only in Anglo Gold Ashanti. That's why other companies are also looking at this, so that you don't actually have to do anything with your existing workforces. You know, they don't get affected. You're going into areas where nobody could go into, and you're extracting value. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important part of this technology. And now also they've improved their, I think it was at 12.8 meters per second, and they've improved on that? Yeah, it's, it's a gradual improvement constantly. You know, you don't ever hear any serious setbacks. You know, you hear that machinery uh, failed and they, you know, redoing it and prototypes have been introduced that have to still be tweaked. But, you know, the pace at which they introduced these prototypes is quicker than we normally expect. You know, they've tried to automate in the past, they've tried to mechanize in the past, and they've always moved back and sort of changed the tech completely. With this one, they continue to go forward despite all the challenges. And so one says they're realizing that you just can't fail. Mm -hmm. And they bring whole boards of directors down to see before they budget for the next, uh, you know, cycle of, of uh, research and development so that the board can see exactly what's going on. And it's not only the test sites do well, but now the production sites are doing well this, at the same time. That's fabulous. Now, Anglo Gold has begun prioritizing self-help steps to cut its debt by $1 billion. Can you elaborate on that? It had a spin-off arrangement. It went to its shareholders and said, look, you know, we will hive off all our international mines and we'll put them on the London Stock Exchange, and it is quite a surprise. Mm -hmm. and we'll keep all our South African mines together here and split the two. We'll keep a shareholding uh, in the London operation and you know, gradually move it down. And the shareholders um, said no, <laughs> because uh, they felt that they would dilute the shares too much. They wanted to raise $2.1 billion at the same time because that conformed to our exchange control regulations uh, so that the, the London operation would be debt free and there would be no obligation from us. So <coughs> now that the shareholders have said no, they're using other measures of, of raising capital and they call them self-help measures because they're doing it themselves. And um, the South African side of it, they're going to try and the, reduce the footprint, the corporate footprint and the operational footprint of their mines. So, you know, turning five mines and two surface operations into three entities, mm -hmm. that is an important step for them because fundamentally our costs are higher than in the international space. You can see the target in the international space is to have an all-in uh, sustainable cost of uh, $900 an ounce so that they must be profitable at $900 uh, an ounce, whereas they can't apply that same yardstick to South Africa mm. until they restructure these operations and bring the five and plus two surface operations down to three operations to get um, all the synergies that uh, they can unlock value from putting these things together. Then they can start setting a target 
for what they can do in South Africa because they can't talk of $900 an ounce target here at this stage. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Now, generating free cash flow is a key strategy for the company. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so they want to get their debt down. So the self-help measure, there'll be about six steps that they take, mm -hmm. including, you know, selling off assets if need be um, and, and partnering with people, particularly in the exploration areas in Colombia. They're doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like a, a very good discovery. Well, a couple of discoveries that they made, they seem very good. And they seem to be attracting partners, potential joint venture partners, to cover some of the, <coughs> the um, exploration uh, costs and obligations. And then at the same time, um, you know, they can uh, reduce debt and also continue with their operation of, of uh, cutting costs. So it's, it's a difficult thing with this falling gold price. I mean, you know, you, you just got to keep moving because they're now talking about gold possibly <laughs> falling below thousand dollars an ounce you know which will be a heck of a shock for everybody when you think that not that long ago it was one thousand nine hundred dollars an ounce and now with the u.s dollar getting stronger you just seem to be in a falling scenario and it's very unpleasant to watch this because people are having to really s shrink their corporate offices you find a lot of desks around mm -hmm. in these big places and when you see well they've cut their costs you you actually see it visibly the people aren't there anymore so it has uh, very big implications. Mm. Now, can you provide an update on the state as the safety statistics that Anglo Gold Ashanti had in the past quarter? Yes, um, they, they're very proud of these safety statistics because uh, one thing that um, you know they want to do is get this down to zero. Because not only are we mining <coughs> very wastefully, but at the same time we're killing people mm. because of the way we mine, particularly with the blasting uh, that we do because it shakes up the whole underground and the seismicity gets enhanced and it's, um, we see we've reached a plateau on the safety. Although we've done well on it, we can't come below it. Yet we find that, you know, that for two quarters they've had uh, fatality three quarters. So this is something they're very, very excited about. And also the, the actual rate of injury is also down. Mm -hmm. So on the safety front, they've managed to make some fantastic strides and hopefully they'll continue to do so People always worry because I think in, as they went into the fourth quarter, there was a fatality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you never, you could never be comfortable mm -hmm. when it comes to seismicity and fall of ground. It seems to be impossible to control. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems generally optimistic. It is. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, thank you very much. It's a great Martin. pleasure, Shannon. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.